New at six tonight, the Columbus Board of Education has called for a special meeting on Monday. It comes one day after the Columbus Teachers Union voted to initiate a 10 day strike notice. The two sides are engaged in a labor dispute over wages and the conditions inside the school buildings. 10 investigates uncovered how dozens of Columbus schools have been flagged in recent months for health and safety concerns. Tonight, Chief Investigative Reporter Bennett Haberly explains how pervasive this problem with deteriorating schools really is. These photos from inside Westmore Middle School mirror many of the same issues found across the Columbus School District. On May 15th, a health and safety inspector found chipping and suspected lead-based paint in multiple classroom windowsills. But emails between the city's health department and Columbus City Schools show the district didn't issue a work order until July 15th two months after that inspection. It wasn't the only repair delay we found. Lead paint was discovered in nine classrooms at Devonshire Elementary during a March inspection, but it took the district seven weeks to issue those repairs. These loose bricks were also found during that same March inspection, but they were still there when 10 investigates visited this week. Records we reviewed also found that inspectors have routinely flagged issues inside Columbus City Schools. We wanted to know why this is a recurring problem, so we took our questions to the district, but they would only agree to do an interview after we showed up at Tuesday night's board meeting. But in your view, what, how quickly should something like that be addressed? Well, as soon as practical, because sometimes we have to set out bids for that work. Sometimes we have people who are already, you know, on a, a purchase order. It just depends on the situation and the extent of it. You yeah. know, is it a small area or is it multiple areas? And again, we may have to also move students out depending on when that work gets done. Well, and it's not just Devonshire, though. I mean, it's, and it's not just issues with playgrounds. I mean, we're talking about Absolutely. issues with lead paint, issues with water intrusion, ceiling tiles that are missing. I mean, we're talking about these are facilities where children are attending class yes. every day. The conditions inside Columbus City Schools have become a focal point in the now public fight between the teachers union and the district. We shared some of the images with Maria Lehman. She's the president of the American Society of Civil Engineers. I would love to tell you that this is, uh, this is unique, but it's not. This is a systemic problem. I think you could find examples like this around the country. Her organization published a report last year finding that schools' conditions across the country deserved a D-plus letter grade, noting that many schools need to provide a safe and effective learning environment for the nation's students, and public schools need to be in good condition. The report also found that more than half of public schools needed to spend money on repairs, renovations, and modernizations to bring the infrastructure into good condition. When we asked her about Columbus City Schools, she said they're not alone. I, I'm not shocked, and I can imagine that most major city school districts have buildings that look like that. And I would love to say that that's not the case, uh, but I know from, from my 40 years in the business that I've seen that. It's not... Um, it's not a one-off, I guess is what I'm telling you. And that, and that's sad because we really need to make the investment. That group's report also encourages districts to get creative with financing so that when these repairs are needed, they don't have to rely on taxpayers to always foot the bill. I think we'll that's notice. critical. I, I absolutely think mm -hmm. that's critical. And Lehman went on to say we should treat it like other public infrastructure, like roads and bridges. CCS, by the way, says it is committed to investing, but it also has plans to ask, ta ask taxpayers to approve a levy and a bond issue this November. The district, by the way, did use stimulus money this year to pay for HVAC systems in 16 schools that needed those upgrades. Yolanda?